Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab the carriage. And we'll take the linear bearings and insert them into the side of the carriage. You should feel a bit of resistance when trying to insert them. And they should sort of pop in. That's when you know you got it right. Next, we'll take the M5 nut and we'll stick it into the bottom of the carriage, making sure to align it properly so that way it can be placed. Notice how I align the flat sides of the M5 nut with the size of the carriage hole. We we'll just go ahead and push it in. Feel free to grab whatever tools you need to push it in. And we make sure that it's pushed in all the way so we can see it through the center hole. And then we can insert the slide into the carriage. Next, we'll take the linear rails and insert one into the left side and one into the right side. We'll then thread the lead screw through the nut that we just inserted into the carriage. Next, we'll take the motor coupling and insert the lead screw halfway into the motor coupling and then tighten down the motor coupling. We're using a two millimeter hex wrench to tighten the motor coupling. Thread it a bit more. Next, we'll push the linear rails into the linear bearings in the carriage. And then we'll align the rails with the other side of the body to make sure that they insert into the holes properly. And then we just push them through. We take our motor, we align it with the back side and insert it into the motor coupling. Push the motor coupling back. And then tighten the motor coupling down on the motor shaft. Now we'll mount our motor to the body with these uh, M3 screws. So we'll insert them into the hole and make sure they align with the screw holes on the motor body. You may have to fidget around with it to, to get it right. And then we just screw them all in. Next, we'll take these M3 nuts and we'll insert them into these slots on the body. There's two on the back and two on the front. One there, one there. And I had a bit of a hard time inserting them, so if you need to, you may grab a pair of pliers, uh, as I do in the video, to get them into the hole. Do the same with the second one. And then we'll grab the M3 screws. We'll insert them into the top of the body and screw them down. Now the purpose of this is to make sure that when the syringe pump is operating, that uh, any pressure from the syringe doesn't deform the body of the syringe pump. It doesn't cause any bending. So it increases the bending rigidity of the pump. So I put one on the right side, one on the left side in the back. And 
and then we'll do the same on the front. But first I bring the sled back to give me a bit more room. Insert the first nut. And like I said, it can be a bit tricky, so you may need some pliers. And then we'll insert the second nut. We'll take our M3 screws, tighten them down. And these M3 screws are actually contacting the linear rails, and so that's what's helping it not to bend. Take this M5 nut, slip it into this slot in the front, take our M5 knob and then thread it through the M5 nut. And then we'll grab this syringe holder part and sort of push it onto the knob. Now the purpose of this is to hold the syringe in place, which can be very helpful. In practice, we haven't necessarily had a need for it since the slot in the back was ample enough to hold the syringe in place. But it's there if you need it. And you're done.